Hello, this is Pastor Sandy McQueen, pastor of the True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, Mobile, Alabama. Let me say I'm so glad that you have joined with us, and we pray that you would pray for us and pray with us as we seek to encourage our sisters and our brothers along the way during this pandemic. The greatest news and the good news is that Jesus Christ came that we might live and not die. So whenever there's fretfulness uh, hovering around you, know that Jesus Christ is the giver of life. As a matter of fact, he says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life, Jesus gives us the gift of life, and that's his son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, we thank you now for the richness of your word, and we thank you for empowering us that we might be the saved sons and daughters uh, that will, uh, as we roam the earth, uh, be making witnesses, becoming witnesses for you and, and making disciples for you. We pray now, Father, for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit that will guide us and teach us Oh, God, the great truths from your word this day and forever. We ask it in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. The inspirational word today comes uh, from the Gospel of Matthew. That's Matthew's Gospel, the fifth chapter, beginning with the tenth verse. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, and shall persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Jesus admonished us to rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. A title today, as an inspirational moment, is more blessed and less stress. Yes, we can be more blessed and less stress because the Lord has set us up as believers to be so. For I've learned beneath the surface of every burden that you may ever have known. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the author, and he has the authority to turn our immoral experiences into yet blessings. So there's a blessing beneath the surface of your situation, and it has been personalized with your name, your DA, DNA is on it. God has a way of solving seamlessly every crisis, every problem in our lives. All of our fears, all of our sorrows, pains, the Lord has a way of turning those worst experiences into blessings. God has heard your cries and he has seen your faithfulness is your time. In our text today, the Lord is found doing what he does best. And what is that? He's giving something away to men, to women, boys and girls. And wherever Jesus was located, he usually was in the business of giving something away. And whenever Jesus has something to give away, somebody is usually present to receive what he is giving. Somebody listening today, perhaps, because you believe that Jesus would show up and that he has a blessing with your name on it, then your faith has 
been put into action to know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Your faith has been put into action to know that greater is he that is within you than is he that is within the world. Yes, my friends, we are overcomers. We've come out from the world uh, of hearing uh, 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 breaking news from CNN, breaking news from Fox 10, breaking news from WKRG5, breaking news from ABC, M WPMI, and so on. Uh, it's now time to hear a breaking, encouraging word from uh, the law. Whose report are you going to believe? Let's tune in to the good news of the great Jehovah God I am that I am. Let's tune in, tune in to a word from God Almighty, a word from Elihim, the creator, a word from Yahweh, the, uh, the self-existent God, a word from Yahweh Nisi, the God of my battle. Let's tune in to a word from Yahweh Shalom, the God of peace. A word from Yahweh Jireh, the God that will provide. And so I've determined in our, in our text today, we see before the Lord speaks to this crowd of witnesses, including his disciples, he calls his disciples aside and, and he warns them about bad times. He warns them about persecution. He warns them about mourning and hunger. Jesus gives to them the Beatitudes, which is called the Sermon on the Mount, because he gave it on a hillside near the town of Capernaum. Now, you remember Capernaum, Mark's Gospel, the second chapter, in the first verse says, and again, Jesus entered into Capernaum after some days. It is where Jesus healed a paralyzed man who was carried by four friends up to the rooftop and then let down on his bed in order to get him whole and saved and safe from his infirmity. And when we read and study uh, Jesus' sermon in Matthew's gospel, the fifth chapter through the seventh chapter, we'll discover at least four ways to better understand these Beatitudes. First of all, the Beatitudes are a code of ethics for the disciples and a standard of conduct for us today as believers. The Beatitudes contrast kingdom values with worldly or cosmos values. The Beatitudes, they reveal the superficial faith of the Pharisees with the real faith that Jesus Christ desires of us living today. Then finally, the Beatitudes show how the Old Testament writings, uh, expectations were fulfilled in the new kingdom of God. Jesus said, I come not to do away, but to fulfill my father's will, my father's word. And as each of these Beatitudes, uh, as we study each of them, they show us today in 2020 how to be more blessed and less stressed. Well, then how can I break through and access my breakthrough to become more blessed? and less stress? Well, I, the answer is found in verses 10 through 12, which paints a clear picture while highlighting 
the main subjects in verses 9, 3 rather, through 9. The first way to know be more how to be more blessed and less stressed is by knowing that you are a forgiven sinner. Knowing that you are a forgiven sinner. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, verse 10 says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Listen, our situation was so messed up until God showed us his love by giving his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to become a ransom for our sins. And because we are all forgiven sinners, the world will persecute you, will persecute me for acknowledging our sins and God's righteousness. Listen, being saved does not mean that you and I have become free to sin or free from sin. We can't live any old kind of way, do anything, and expect God to bless a cursed lifestyle. No, because accumulated sin comes at a cost. Romans, the sixth chapter and the 23rd verse says, for the wages, meaning you have to work toward it. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through, he's the only one, through Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son. So therefore, sin is still present. And being saved mean that we are saved from sin's power. We're saved from sin, from the penalty of sin. Because Jesus took the stain out of sin that you and I had left. So because we're forgiven sinners, my Christian friends, we are inclined to have yes, stressful moments. But we ought not give up, nor must we give in. Because there's a blessing in the making, remember, beneath your surface with your name on it. So know that you are forgiven sinner. Secondly, allow the results from your story to increase your faith. Allow the results from your story, from your testimony to increase your faith. The 11th verse says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and shall persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. Listen at what he says, for my name's sake. Your persecution means that you have shown yourself to be faithful. Yeah, that, that's where you can shout right now. Amen. You're going through it because, amen, uh, you've shown yourself to be faithful. And the devil won't leave you alone. And when folks tell lies on you, allow this verse. You can go to this verse and you can read it verbatim. Uh, there's a blessing that's waiting on you. Now, the reason some of us reap the, don't never reap the blessing from the lie that has been told on us is because we destroy our own blessing by trying to run down the lie that was told on us. Perhaps it was years ago. But God commanded us to run this race, not to run down lies. Allow the results of your story to increase your faith. Then finally, believe beyond your now. Believe beyond your now in order to become more blessed and less stressed. Verse 12 says, rejoice. And be exceedingly glad. I like to sing that word exceedingly. Uh, that word exceedingly uh, is an expression of extremely. Be, be extremely glad. For great is your reward. Great is your reward, Sandy. In heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. Listen, you're not the first. Nor will you be the last. 
Because remember, you are a child of the king to be picked on. You may not understand it now. You may not even be able to see it now. You may not be able to overcome it right now. But to God be the glory, you ought to say, I'm on my way. And I'm going to tell my story. One of these old days, how I made it over. Because I'm believing beyond my right now. A greater day is coming in my life. A better day is coming. And I know that a better day is coming because Jesus has said. And because I heard him say rejoice when you are persecuted. Just like Elijah and Jeremiah and Daniel, my favorite uh, major prophets, whom were God's great prophets, that persecution and our persecution today uh, means uh, that we have shown ourselves faithful. Faithful unto death. And in the future, God will reward the faithful. We ought to be more blessed and less stressed. And in closing, I say, if I knew then what I know now, I could have been more blessed and less stressed as a young man, a younger man, about life's issues. For Jesus Christ did not save you and I to transport distress and to transport fears on every hand to weigh us down in misery and to weigh us down in despair, but to, he saves us that we might keep our eyes on the prize. And I pray today that there's somebody along who are witnessing with me whose eyes is on the prize, whose eyes are on God. Keep your eyes on God and you can learn how to become more blessed and less stressed. Matter of fact, God saved you that we might be blessings to others. Remember, we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. To God be the glory and may you continue to be blessed and don't allow that stress to cause you to miss your opportunity to be in a blessing to others. God bless you on today. Meet us here at the Vine, at the drive-in services. That's 850 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue, Mobile, Alabama. Our services will be live screened also on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you for following us and you can search us at the Vine Mobile. And we're asking also that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel, True Vine Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you. This is Pastor McQueen. May the Lord continue to bless you real good.